Hey Techno Freaks, Techno Odin here, continuing the character breakdowns for Guilty Gear Strive. This time, this sword is heavier than it looks. With Kai Kisk. Couldn't we have got a cooler quote? Let me show you why they call me lightning. Like that! Why couldn't we have used that? The first king of Illyria, Kai, like Sol, would be deemed as the real of Guilty Gear. Only this time with all the excitement of a dry Weetabix. So pretty much exactly like Ryu. However, this Kai has a bit more milk added to our dry brick of wheat in the form of his unique mechanic, Shock State. So if Kai connects with specific special attacks, they will put the opponent in a Shock State, indicated by a slow, pulsating aura with electricity all around the opponent like they just went Super Saiyan 2. This state lasts a set duration depending on the special that is connected with it. And I keep using the word connected as it doesn't really matter if they block the attack or not, the state is still applied with full duration. But I hear you ask tech, you handsome devil, what does this state actually do? And to that I say thank you, I have been putting a lot of moisturizer on, and this state effectively buffs the damage of the next special attack you land by about 10% or so. This also applies to damage on block or chip damage, and it also increases the block stun or pushback of those attacks by a slight amount. Now once you land the special attack, you will remove that shock state, so a good idea is to try and finish with a move that will apply the state back on. Which is kind of what makes this your whole game plan, you really want to keep them in that shock state. Key attacks are as follows, starting as always with 6P. This has Kai deliver a swift back elbow to the opponent and keeps them relatively close, allowing you to cancel into a special attack a lot easier. If used on an aerial opponent, it will send them full screen, with the counter hit slowing them down enough to cancel into a good special to get that shock state back on. His next key attack is his 5S, where Kai thrusts his sword at the opponent. It has decent range, a lot of pushback on block, and it's counter hit, while unable to combo into a second 5S a la Big Sol, can allow for certain combo options that aren't possible in normal routes. And his close slash is by far one of his best offensive options. If it hits an aerial opponent, it will bounce them into the air, making combos that little bit easier, and it's just relatively a great move. Next we have his standard 5k, as this move is classed as a low hitting attack, which is pretty rare in these cases, and since kicks and punches are so fast, having a one button low in this game is a pretty good option to have. Our next key attack is his second command normal, 6k where Kai delivers a chunky roundhouse kick. It's advantageous on block and its counter hit has enough stun time to combo into pretty much any button. Its only real downside is it's pretty slow, so can be interrupted. Now a good place to use this move is after a close slash, as one, if you get a counter hit off the close slash, it's a combo. Two, if the close slash hits, you can just use your normal combo routes instead. And three, if they block the close slash, they have to worry about three other options that follow up. Meaning that if they are more focused on blocking, you can pull off that 6k, get that huge block advantage, and continue on with your block string. Now his heavy slash has some decent range, and just like his far slash, allows for combo options not normally possible when you land a counter. It has some good pushback on both hit and block, allowing you to keep yourself at a safe distance. Our next string is his final command normal, 6HS. This looks almost similar to his regular heavy slash, but the key difference is that on hit, it will send the opponent spiraling away, with the counter hit slowing the opponent down, allowing you to get some meaty combos. This move is your best friend in the corner, as it will bounce the opponent off the wall, allowing for some non-meter extensions with the right follow-up. It's not as good as Sol's Heavy Slash or Erdust, 
but still, it's better than nothing. Finally, we have 2HS, because it's a two-hitter, meaning one attack deals two hits, and it's one of his best anti-air options in the game. It has a jack ton of range, both horizontally and vertically, and its counter hit gives a lot of airtime, be it if the opponent is either on the ground or in the air, allowing your creativity to flow. As an honourable mention, I'll throw in his jump heavy slash, as it's a great overhead jumping option and his main aerial offence move. With that said, onto the specials. We start things off with Stun Edge, Kai's more traditional version of the Hadouken, and the first move to bring in the Stun State. This move is a simple projectile that has Kai slash an orb of lightning, sending it out like an arrow. It's pretty fast, travels full screen, and has some decent pushback if it connects when the opponent is in the air. The move also comes in four variations, all classing as separate moves, but they all act the same way more or less, so I'm putting them all together. Doing the heavy slash variation will grant you the charged stun edge. This has a much slower startup, but will shoot almost a Kai-sized projectile at the opponent. This move hits the opponent three times when it connects, and is a great setup tool after a two dust or a throw in the corner, as it gives you enough time to apply some pressure. Finally, we have the Ur variants. Again, these tie to Slash and Heavy Slash. The Slash version fires the projectile out at a 75 degree angle, while the Heavy Slash version sends it out at a 25 degree angle. No, no, put the protractors away. Now, what's great about the Ur variations is the Tiger Knee options. Normally, if you were just to jump, the Heavy Slash version would have a hard time hitting the target because of that line of travel. But with the Tiger Knee inputs, Kai leaps at the perfect height for both moves to hit with no issues. This makes that projectile game much more of a nuisance for the opponent. Now, the final note I'll add on these moves is the shock state time they apply. So both the normal and Ur variants grant a shock state for about four seconds, while the charged version grants shock state for about five seconds, give or take. Knowing roughly how long you have before the shock state wears off will make a big difference in your offense. His next special is Vapor Thrust, Kai's boy in the plastic bubble version of the Dragon Punch, that once again comes in two flavors. The Slash version has Kai bubble jump vertically with little airtime, while the Heavy Slash version has a hell of a lot more airtime, but covers a lot more ground. It's also a really strong move if you have tension in the corner, as with the right height and setup, the Heavy Vapor Thrust will extend combos at the wall, really allowing for some style points. The biggest downside, like with all DPs, is they be death on block, and in this instance, Alasol, you can't roam and cancel if you miss. So once again, be very careful. Next, we have Stun Dipper, the terrifying prospect of what would happen if Subby slide and reuse Hurricane Kick had a baby. This low profile attack has Kai perform a sublime sliding tackle before slashing the opponent's legs. Once again, it's low profile, so can duck many of the projectiles, vampiric swords, and scalpel pokes with Nary Worry. And its range is okay, not the best, but not bad. The only real downsides are one, it's really punishable on block, and in tying in this, two, it has what I call that retribution hit, which is something I take from Shantoto from the City of NT. Basically, the distance where Kai lands the slide in tackle will determine the size of the gap before the slash comes out. Land the slide kick at default position or further and it will be classed as a two-hit combo. Land it any pixel closer, and the opponent can block the sword strike and punish you for a full combo. It's always been like that, but I have never agreed with it. Effectively, you are being punished for landing an attack too close. I wish this was a bug, but no. Our penultimate special is Dirty Clark, which according to Google Translate, is French for Say Sparkle. <laughs> this short-ranged attack has Kai slash with all the brony power he can muster, causing the opponent to slide across the floor for a hard knockdown. This move is also the last special move to apply the shock state, and it applies it for the hella long 
six seconds. This is probably because you send your opponent across the screen, so it has to make up for the loss of time. This is your best combo ender up close or in the corner as that mix of hard knockdown and shock state application keeps things really favourable. Just a simple string into Dira Claw, Red Roman into another simple string, finishing with that second Dira Claw, literally takes a great chunk of damage, reapplies that shock state, and keeps you with all that space to throw out whatever you will. The move is also really good on block. Not the safest, but it has a jack ton of pushback, making it hard to punish unless you have a fast rangey normal attack. Pursue Ramlethal. Finally, we have Fuder Arc, or as the English call it, Lightning Arc. And this is Kai's equivalent to Sol's Bandit Bringer, a high profile leap that ends with a safish attack on block. The biggest downside is that startup. While you do cover a lot of ground, Kai can easily be interrupted. Held as a bloody mission on the May ship difficulty that teaches you how to beat it with an invincible move. However, it's still one of his best attacks. If it hits an airborne opponent, it will spike them to the floor, and with its long distance covering, can combo into a long range counter from 5 or 6 HS. Good thing to do with Lightning Arc is to do it after a dash. The extra momentum will send you a lot further, and hell, if you get that hard knockdown off a Sparkle Slash and do a dash in Lightning Arc, you will pretty much force a block onto the opponent, which because of that shock state, you will be at an advantage to keep up the pressure. For overdrives, we start with Ride the Lightning, Kai's patented ultimate move. This deals decent damage and travels stupid far. It has two variations, one in the ground and one in the air, meaning this can also be Tiger Knee. The big downsides for this move are one, it's only invincible on startup, so can be easily outpoked by projectiles or snuffed out by invincibility moves. Again, there's literally a mission on how to snuff it out with invincibility moves. And two, there is a gap before the final hit. So if your opponent was only able to block you at the beginning, they will have enough time to buffer in a dragon punch or help even their own overdrive while they auto block that first attack and then rip you a new one before you can land the final hit. And just as a final note, never do the Ur version near a Potemkin with tension. You are going to have a bad time. Next, we have Sacred Edge, the super version of the Stun Edge. It's really fast, hits five times, and applies the Shock State debuff for about six seconds, rivaling the Sparkle Slash. It will beat most projectiles in a trade, and yeah, it's pretty good. Not all that damaging unless you have the Shock State applied already, but still, it's pretty good. And it will wall break if they are in the corner, which I think is pretty much a universal thing unless stated otherwise. Finally, wait, there's more? We have Dragon Install, Kai's newest and most controversial overdrive yet. Seeing as he stole it from old Freddy Boy. And this is Kai unleashed the beast kinda and go into his Dragon Install form. I think. Honestly, I don't know if it's really a form change or a My Hero Academia cosplay, but either way, something's happening, and it increases the damage and hit properties of all of Kai's special attacks. The Stun Edge projectile increases in size and hits more times, Vapor Thrust and Lightning Arc both count as a two-hit attack, while Heavy Vapor Thrust, Stun Dipper, and Sparkle Slash all count as three hits. Hell, even the overdrives get a boost. Sacred Edge getting boosted to 8 hits, and Ride the Lightning getting enough hits to take the opponent almost full screen and through the wall. Now this seems to come at the cost of not being able to apply the shock state from any of the moves that normally grant it. And its big downside is it's a high risk, high reward as you can only activate this move if you are under 30 health. But when you are in this form, it is deadly. So deadly that the final Kai matchup mission tutorial is to literally not let Kai live long enough to activate it. I'm not joking, you have to land a combo that will kill Kai from above 30% to pass the damn mission. Safe to say, if Kai activates Dragon Install and still has tension or burst available, 
it ain't gonna end well. All in all, Kai is a decent, well-rounded, jack-of-all-trades character. But when he's compared to Saul as the starter, he just feels weak. It's not really his fault. For some reason, he just seems to always be designed kind of poorly in a mechanical terms. At least as far as my opinion goes. Too many of his moves share the same button, and at times, in the heat of battle, the wrong move can sometimes come out, landing you in a heap of trouble. And for new people who are coming into the game who are used to the more Neverrealm Studios way of things where moves don't take up the same slots, this will take a lot of time to get used to. Hell, I still get the odd vapor thrust when I try to jump forward and go for a cheeky stun edge in the air. And let's just call it for what it is. Stun Dipper is just stupid. I have always thought that if you hit the opponent with the slide kick, they should be stunned enough for the sword slash to connect. The fact that they can block the most important and punishing part, all because you used it too close, is just absolutely broken to me. I don't care if that's how it's always been. It was done then, and it's done now. But despite these flaws, he is still a decent fighter, with his own reasons to play. If you want to hit buttons, do a lot of damage, and have fun and just do unga bunga style, you play Sol. But if you want to learn the game to its core, learn the intricacies of spacing, neutral, and all that fighter game style, you play as Kai. He isn't just a pick up and win character. You will realize that you will have to use all the tools you have at your disposal to get something going. Game plan wise, you have those projectiles. Use them. Alternate between the normal and earth stun edges and try to use the charge when the opponent's knocked down to the floor in the corner or after a two dust. Use the earth dash into heavy slash or a dashing lightning arc after the sparkle slash or a throw mid screen to keep that pressure up. And don't sleep on those tiger knee inputs. They give Kai much more projectile options and a perfect trade to Sol's heavy mob cemetery. Keep all this in mind and you'll show that they don't have the skills to deserve your name. Challenge me again whenever you like. Okay, that's it for today's video. Hope it helps, and if it did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, sparkle slash the bell thingy, and follow me on both Twitch and Twitter. Also, if you have any tips yourself, or have a character you want me to do next, let me know in the comment section below. And finally, tune in next time where only a fool treads the path of a demon lightly, with Nagoriyuki. But until that day, this has been Techno Odin. Stay safe, claim skulls, and let's rock. Oh, the smell of the game.